the book of Psalm 44 verse 1 says, We have heard with our hair, O God, our fathers have told us what works you did in their days, in the days of old. He is still in the business of doing wonders. So much more than he has done in the days of old, he is still doing in the life of his children. And that is why we are here. Welcome to Touched by Faith. My name is Olufunke Owu. Right now, the word of the Lord will be coming to us by no other person than our Father in the Lord, Pastor Enoch Adejari Adeboe, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Don't go anywhere, because today is going to be a great day for you and I. When I was younger, and people want to talk about a man with a lot of influence, they used to say, he has long legs. <laughs> Allow me to introduce you to the one who had the longest legs of all. It's my father, the almighty God. His legs are extremely long. From heaven all the way to the earth. What about his hands? Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 27, Deuteronomy 33, verse 27 says his arms are everlasting. You see, if a man is the one lifting you and he's standing and he really, really wants to lift you, he can lift you with his hand lifted high. If he wants to add to how high he can lift you, he can stand on his toes. But very soon, his toes will begin to pain him, so he will come back to standing firm. And after some time, his hands will be heavy, and they will begin to bring you down. But the hands of my father are everlasting. When he's lifting you, he can lift you everlastingly. How high can God lift you? For Samuel chapter 2, from verse 7 to 8, for Samuel chapter 2, from verse 7 to 8, tells us that he's the one who lifts up one and brings down another. And he can pick a beggar from the dunghill and keep lifting him until he begins to die with kings. He can even lift him so high that he, according to the word of God, he can inherit the throne of glory. How high can God lift you? Ask David. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, from verse 1 to 13, 1 Samuel 16, from verse 1 to 13, when God told Samuel that he has appointed a king, he has found a king in the house of Jesse, and Samuel arrived, and Jesse began to present his children, he did not present David. David didn't count. And when God picked him up, he woke up in the morning, a shepherd boy, but ended a king. Now, God didn't stop there. He started as a king among his brethren. Then he became the king of Judah. Then he became the king of Israel. And by the time we got to Mark chapter 10, from verse 46 to 52, Mark 10, 46 to 52, Bartimaeus called Jesus Christ, the son of David. He called the king of kings himself, the son of David. How high can God lift you? Why don't you ask Joshua? In Joshua chapter 1 from verse 1 to 8, Joshua chapter 1 from verse 1 to 8, the Bible tells us that Joshua the son of Nun was a minister of Moses. Minister means messenger, servant. 
house help. The Almighty God lifted up a house help and turned him to a head of state, the leader of a nation. How high can God lift you? Ask Elisha. In 1 Kings chapter 19 from verse 19 to 21, 1 Kings 19 from verse 19 to 21, the Bible tells me that Elisha was a farmer's boy, the son of a farmer. But by the time you get to 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 14 to 21, 2 Kings chapter 13 from verse 14 to 21, you find a, a king calling him my daddy. Almighty God can pick a businessman and turn him to a mighty prophet. How high can God lift you? Ask Peter. Welcome back. Trust you have been blessed by that word that you have heard. Several other messages by Pastor Enoch Adejari Adebo are available on all our social media platforms. Or you can get to watch us on Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, Android TV, and Apple TV. You can also follow us at www.redeemersnetwork.tv. Okay, so today we'll be bringing to you the story of a couple who waited several years for the fruit of the womb and the same God who has been in the business of doing wonders right from the days of our forefathers came through for them at his own time and today they are here sharing their testimony to bless you and I and to return all the glory to God. Now, Mrs. Mark. Mm. Mark, you are a boy. I'm uh, from uh, Region 31, or your province 11, uh, Testimony Zone, and the Fruitful and Assembly area. We, and my husband as well is the area pastor of Fruitful and Assembly area. He is an uh, assistant pastor, and I'm a deaconess in the Dream Christian of God. I got born again when I was in secondary school. My parents, precisely, JSS to then, to around 1995, prayer group, our family background, because I'm from the Muslim background, and uh, so I'm the firstborn. So, from uh, the, the school I attended in Amoyigama School, AKT, Ikele AKT, precisely, the background I go back home, you know, the stress, as in, the challenge of Muslim background, whatever, I went back, I can't like say until 2009. So I met Jesus again around September, September 9. As ever since then, God has been helping me. You know, I, I dedicated my life to Christ ever since I've been with God. And God has been helping me. I got married June 30, 2012 in Anglican Church because I attended the Anglican Church before. It was married that brought me to read him. And uh, we are believing God for the fruit of the womb. First year, nothing. And since 2012, the third year, uh, I got pregnant. I don't even know, but so because of the Holy Spirit, I was confirmed pregnant. Not less than two months, the thing came down. I had a miscarriage. 2014, again, I had another miscarriage. And never 2014, nothing. We, we got married in June 30th, 2012. And uh, we believe in God after the first year of the marriage, the second year of the marriage. Uh, you know, people will start asking, well, what's happening, what's happening, what's happening? My wife had miscarriage twice. And one peculiar thing about those miscarriage is that those miscarriage usually happen on the month of our wedding, which is in June. So miscarriage usually occurs in June. So we are believing God for the fruit of the womb. In some, in the course of it too, uh, pressure from uh, parents and some other things, we also used some of the help that was given to us, but in all fairness, those help didn't work. So the two of us just resulted into the fact that if we have done what people wanted us to do and it's not working, 
I think it's better for us now to let the people be. Since they've seen that it's obvious that it's not working, it's better for us to just face this God of Abraham who can do nothing. So we'll be going to church, going to camp, you know, praying. And uh, 2014, this is 2014 or 15 precisely, we were told to go for a checkup, medical checkup, to know why, you know, miscarriage and the other thing. And uh, the doctor said we were, you know, we went for a scan, some tests, blah, blah. blah. So the result of the test is giving us that uh, there's a blockage of fallopian tube. And we asked what is the cause, say maybe disease or maybe some stress, maybe accident or whatever. And I said, my dog, I, I didn't have any accident that, you know, I didn't do any operation, I didn't, so I don't know. So I think there was one experience that we had in 2017. You know, I just said that uh, the word of prophecy came in June Holy Ghost night. Yes. In May, my wife was just putting pressure on me. In May, that we need to see a gynecologist. That this thing is, is, is not one year, it's not two years, it's not three years, it's not four, it's not five. That we just need to see a gynecologist. And I said, okay, no problem. We saw a gynecologist. And the gynecologist was telling us that we need to... Uh, it was suggesting an idea for, my, for myself and my wife. So I remember that the gynecologist said, there's no way to eat it. Two ways to eat is IVF. And my wife said, how much is IVF then? And I said, maybe around 3 million plus. <laughs> and my husband said, I said, 3 million, okay. If I have 3 million, I will, not, I will go and give it to God. So he made, made up a particular statement to that man. And the gynecologist even said he was a um, redeemed pastor before, before he went to, you know, to have his own, you know, ministry. So he was encouraging us that ah, IVF is not a sin now. She they are doing it. Ah, it's not a sin. He said it's not because it's a sin. But that three, ah, three million, okay. <laughs> so that he can't, can't do that. And I said, eh, we should be praying that there's nothing God cannot do. And my husband and I made it that what's, uh, that the, uh, what's the God of, that the people cannot do, that we should forget about it. I know that he said it. That what the God of that people cannot do, that we should forget about it. In all fairness, my, because the family I came from, my, nobody put pressure on my wife. But you know, woman too, I think the only person that ever put pressure on my wife should be my wife's mother, not even for my own part of my family. Not because I didn't give such a rule for anybody to be disturbing her. I think the only person who did put pressure on my wife was her own mother. And if, I won't call it that pressure much, it was just a question of, how far, how far, how far, how far. Most of the time, the only thing that, make, that makes us feel bad, it is when it is a naming ceremony period. Okay. And you know, the way people will behave sometimes to you as pastor, you know, it is a pastor that will carry the baby to give meaning to you, why the wife of the pastor will give the baby to the pastor. You know, people sometimes see their reaction, their character, but for all and for me as a person, which I've told in my life, is because that they, they were you to do. So do it. And I remember then that whatever the God of Adebayo can do, so be it. I remember I asked the doctor, is there another thing you want to tell us? The doctor said no. I said, no problem, sir. I've had you. But for us, I will, we will not do IVF. That was in May before God now did this wonder in June. You know, the gynecologist said, maybe you can go make some drugs for us. So we are taking some drugs and at the long run, 2000 and, uh, we took the drugs 2015, 2016, but I said, I'm not comfortable with the drug again. That's, I don't like the reaction in my body that we should just do it ourselves. So in the process also, we wrote a letter to Daddy Gio and Daddy Gio replied by saying, you will soon share your testimony. And I, two years after, we are still believing God for testimony. But as you know, we have it. I think it was 10 June, June 2017. Now, we were the only Ghost night in June 2017. And uh, the word of prophecy came that night. And uh, for my wife, she worked with Ondo State Teaching Commission as a teacher. So they have not received their salary for long. So that particular night at Benigo, June 2017, 
She got an alert. She received an alert of her salary being paid. So luckily for her, that's in uh, two she was with her uh, ATM card. So she just felt okay. Since this word of prophecy has come out and she received it, she just used her entire salary, everything as as a covenant to God. That was in June 2017. The law, as the law we have it, that same month too, my wife took him and nine months after she gave back to the baby boy. So about 2017. Uh, Holy Ghost service, that is June, June 2017 Holy Ghost service. The when that he just in the man, the pulpit, the first thing that he said after he has prayed, I said the doctor report of that blockage of another tube is gone. We went for we went with uh, one of our pastors uh, family, and the wife is heavily pregnant. And the doctor said, Sister Mark, any any testimony? I said I grab it. I'm the one. So. I'm, I just ran to the altar, touched it, touched the altar with, with that, and I believe the the prophecy. And before then, I worked with Ondo State, so they were all know about maybe is it nine nine months then. So right in that place, that's uh, the legal service. So one of the uh, one of our salary for a particular month just came in, maybe sixty plus. I said, ah, so I'm sewing it. I said I will sew it to back up the you know the prophecy. And I said, ah, so okay, you have not paid the salary since nine months, just this one. And then it's not even complete, it's not your actual salary. I said, let me just sew it. I said, when I didn't even collect the salary over nine months, I didn't die now. So then I sewed it right there with the in the Tim Nehemiah. And I prayed to God then I said, God, I'm sewing this, you know, to back up the prophecy that when as I'm coming, you know, I want to have my baby. And that very month, that June. I conceived, you know, I went to the hospital, I was just sick, taking malaria drugs, it's not going. So I said, I, uh, well, I was told to go and do, you know, um, pregnancy test. And that June, I was confirmed. I was pregnant. And then, and then even before that time, before we, before uh, 2000, that 2017, that the other prophesied, you know, I do tell God that God, if you do it, I'm not redeeming my bad money brought me to redeem. If you do it, I'm coming to go and share the testimony. I went over before the medical, whatever, you know, all these uh, because my mother and and my mother in law, she's late now. So I give her all those uh, I go take I go take this, take that. This at this experience I cannot forget. Sincerely, I can't forget it. I was taking things, I, I would take one local egg, one local egg for seven days. One local egg, any of the money, I will not talk to anybody. They must not give the gifts, I will not answer. It was so many concussions, I don't know. I don't even know. They will prepare it on my way. I will not be aware of it. It's one local egg, as in. So after I, I will take it, I will go and sleep back for one week. Nothing happened. I took um, all those, my wife is from Middle State, and I'm, I'm from Middle State. So all those uh, concussion for me, they say they brought it to I would just vomit, vomit, nothing. But even that period, I didn't even pregnant for one minute. People get pregnant for one minute. So, so I just decided, we decided that we are not taking anything again. The only advice I would give to whoever who is believing God for the truth of the womb is to have their hope in God. Because for us, even the child that was still a miracle, we shows to us that God has hands in me. So the advice I will give to whoever who is believing God for the truth of the womb is to put their hope on God. Even when you use Abba, you use medical. If it is if it work, it is because God wanted it to work. Yeah. And you know when God wanted to show how powerful he is, he will he will use every other thing that you have to do. Funny enough, when my wife was even pregnant, she didn't even know that she couldn't pregnant. He went to hospital to check that she's not feeling too well, and the doctor told her you are pregnant. She was, she was looking at the doctor, pregnant. How? From where? That was when she knew. So for whoever believing God for the truth of the womb, it is God, not what the doctor has said. Because he said, who said the things are coming to pass when the Lord did not command it? So it is God. It is only God that can do it. Whoever is believing God for the truth of the womb, just believe in that God 
who can do wonders? I conceive naturally with the help of God. Even I, I believe that is the work of, is that prophecy that worked for me. Because after that he prayed, you know, the normal usual you see that we need that we worship and pray. So you know he stood up. The first statement that is you know that said that, that doctor report of uh, blockage of fallopian tube is cancelled. And you know, I grabbed it. I said, Yes, it's me. And one of our family friends that we went to I said, Ah, oh, Mark, and you know any you know, and you know any prophecy? I said, I know. I'm the one I grab it. Um, I my for people that are trusting God for the fruit of the womb and they have tried a lot of means, maybe by herbally or medically or you know, and I would advise them that they should follow God, they should wait on God. God is the only God that can do it. Because I was introduced to to do IVF. My husband said, I do have the money for IVF. And then we were told that we would do operation then. My husband said, No, I can't do it. I'm even scared to do operation. But I waited on God. And God used his servants uh, that the GO uh, to you know to declare the word. And I connected with it and God honored his word. And he gave me oh God, my miracle, gave me my own miracle child. So I my advice for people who believe in God for first of the woman like is to wait on God. God is still in the business of doing it. And he will do it for you. He has done it before and he will do it. He has done my own. He will do your own. Just believe in God. Don't be in haste. Just, you know, pray. Your own time will come. What's your name? Samuel. How old are you? Science. Wow, we are showing your five. Good boy. Can you see? See what the Lord has done. What we waited for has come to pass. Well, let somebody shout hallelujah. You have listened to the testimonies. And I believe that the God that we serve is no respecter of persons. What he had done for others is more than willing to do for you. But before you can begin to enjoy the kind of miracles, signs, and wonders that you have heard during these testimony time, you must surrender your life to him. Miracles are for children of God. And so if you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ right now, you just bow your head, I will pray with you, and the Lord will save your soul. So, shall we pray now? My Father, my God, you know all things, and you can see all things. You can see these people who have listened to the miracle walking power of the Almighty God, what it can do in the life of people. And they say they want these kind of testimonies too. So as they are surrendering their lives to you now, Father, please receive them, save their souls, and Lord God Almighty, let your blood wash away their sins. And from now on, Lord God Almighty, anytime they cry unto you, answer them by fire. Very soon, let me begin to hear their testimonies. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let someone shout hallelujah. Wow, Jesus, the wonder-working God, the miracle-working God. He has done it for these people. He can do yours. Scripture says in the book of Luke 1, 37, that with God, all things are possible yes with him all things are possible with this family it looked impossible initially but when god stepped in the story changed and today we can all see what god has done in this family so what is that thing that you are going through thinking it is impossible to 
to achieve or thinking God cannot do it. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Never believe it. God is a God of wonders. He has done it in the time past. He has done it for this couple. He will do yours. Thank you so much for joining us on today's episode of Touched by Faith. I am still Olufuke Owu. Why don't you join us same time, same station for another power part on this program. Network Television.